We bought the cheapest laptops from each of the major retailers, Walmart, Amazon, AliExpress, Best Buy and Target, because we were genuinely interested in whether these laptops are actually viable, even for basic use. Sneak preview, the whole experience was a colossal disaster. And if you know anyone, friend, family or even foe who's considering walking into a store and buying a super cheap laptop, make them watch this video. The shopping experience. After sorting each laptop by price from cheapest to most expensive, we immediately noticed the abundance of Chromebooks. But our mission was to find full-fledged laptops, so we filtered them out. Once done, we were left with a bunch of laptops that we knew straight away from their specs would be completely useless. The most common culprit was too little memory and storage, which would make it almost impossible to run any modern program. Take this to Cozy Laptop. It only has two gig of memory and 32 gig of storage. Windows 11's minimum requirements are four gigs of memory and 64 gigs of storage. These laptops are a great example of how misleading shopping online now is. Seriously, Amazon reviews are about as real as Santa Claus. For example, this Decozy laptop has a score of 3.1 stars, indicating it's above average. But when you read the seven written reviews, five of them say it is completely unusable. And I would definitely question the validity of the one five-star review that claims it's a high-performance laptop. And by the way, Many of these laptops are actually the same underlying piece of crap, just with a different name slapped on top. This practice has been heavily pushed by influencers selling courses on how to get rich on Amazon and other e-commerce platforms. Find a cheap product overseas, slap your branding on it, mark it up and sell it locally. This practice of selling cheap garbage online, powered by fake reviews and even sponsored search results, now plagues so many online stores. This broken process, by the way, is the reason that we've now launched our own website. We only recommend products that we've personally tested, and we have recommended lists of laptops for different use cases. Plus, we've even got useful filters, like whether the laptop has long battery life. So go check that out, link down below. Anyway, to ensure the laptops would actually be useful, we set our minimum search parameters to at least four gigs of memory, 64 gigs of storage, and have a full version of Windows included, all for under $200. And if possible, we tried to prioritize a screen with at least full HD resolution. With that said, the best cheap laptop from Walmart was the Dell Latitude E6420, which we bought for $159. From Target, we got the Hyundai HiBook for $139, and from AliExpress, the Adremo LeoBook 13 for $169, and also for $169 from Amazon, Lenovo's IdeaPad 3. We did plan to buy one from Best Buy, by the way, but the cheapest laptop there was actually the IdeaPad 1. As we knew it would be worse than the IdeaPad 3 that we'd already ordered, we ended up abandoning that purchase. Plus, I've already done a review on another cheap Asus laptop from Best Buy, which I'll link down below. Unboxing. Our excitement for the packages to arrive was immense. Taylor spent most days staring out the front door in anticipation. Finally, the day was here. We ripped apart the first package like a kid on Christmas morning, only to be slapped in the face with a strong smell of cigarette smoke. It appeared our Dell Latitude was a refurbished one and not a new one, as implied by the Walmart seller's page. Not only did this laptop stink, but it was filthy. What increased the overall dodginess is that this laptop came with a piece of paper from the seller inside, stating in capital letters, do not return to Walmart. It even came with its own tech support phone number. Good heavens what that's about. And if you flipped it over, there was some good news. We had been upgraded for no charge from our 10 year old model to a minuscule, ever so slightly better 10 year old model. But of course the seller made it sound like a big thing. Look. To sum up this laptop, it looks like an old brick with a DVD player and it weighs about as much. At least the rest of the laptops were new. However, the joys of this experience just weren't over. The IdeaPad 3 literally didn't sit flush on the desk. It was also the only laptop that came with Windows 10 S mode, a simplified version of Windows that only lets you run applications from the Windows Store. You can swap it to the full version though, which we did. The Hyundai HiBook had a horrific TN panel with dreadful viewing angles. You literally have to sit directly in front of it to see anything at all. And the Leo Book didn't come with a US charger, even though we specifically selected the US version. And FYI, this laptop uses a barrel pin charger, so we couldn't just easily use a USB-C one that we had lying around the studio. In fact, none of these laptops have a USB-C port at all. Moving on to testing. 
The Latitude was the fastest of the bunch, and that's not saying much. It uses a 10-year-old Intel i5 processor with two cores and four threads. Just so you get a point of reference of how slow this laptop is, it delivered a Geekbench multi-core score of 1879, which is far less than a modern low-powered processor would deliver with just one single core. The other laptops do have more recent processors, but they're actually much, much slower, as they're from Intel's Pentium and Celeron ranges, which are only designed for very low-powered devices. And even though not as old as the Latitude's processor, their processors are still four to eight years old, so their performance is beyond woeful. And back on the Latitude, if you thought that due to its semi-decent processor that the computer would be usable, think again. The laptop's performance was held back because of its reliance on a mechanical hard drive. These drives are orders of magnitude slower to access data than more modern SSDs. So, to sum up performance, all these laptops are atrocious. I mean, heck, the Leo book took 30 minutes to complete a single run of Geekbench, a test that normally takes three to five. Guys, it couldn't even play a YouTube video back at 480p. Only basic, basic word processing of viewing very simple websites is what these laptops can actually do. I say simple websites as any page with complexity is just gonna grind these laptops to a halt. If you try to do anything more, you're just sitting there wasting your time. Time that, quite frankly, could be spent working to afford a better laptop. Look, I could go through how dreadful several of the laptop screens are or other aspects of them, but it's really the performance that is the gating issue. I mean, heck, the Leo Book screen was actually pretty decent, so it's just a shame that its performance was so bad. In conclusion, all four of these laptops are garbage. The companies manufacturing the three laptops that we purchase new should be ashamed of themselves. At this price point, they are literally making products that are nothing but e-waste and will definitely end up in a landfill. When it comes to our refurbished latitude, it's three years past expired. So if you or someone you know is shopping on the tightest of budgets, do not buy a new laptop under $200. You're literally flushing your money down the toilet. So here's my recommendations of what you should actually do. First, if you can save a bit more money, laptops at around the $400 price point are very viable and completely usable. To help you out, I've listed my favorite super cheap laptops on our website. The second option is to look for a second-hand one. To do this, you'll need to know what laptops were actually good from the last couple of years. To help you out, you'll find the names of the ones that I'd look for down below this video. The third option is to consider buying a tablet with a Bluetooth keyboard, either a cheap Android one or a refurbished iPad. For those just browsing the web and working on Office documents, these will provide you with a better overall experience than buying a laptop in this price range. The fourth option is kind of cool. If you have a Samsung phone, you could buy a monitor, keyboard, and mouse and run Samsung DeX. That basically turns your phone into a desktop computer with capabilities similar to a Chromebook. With that set up, you can comfortably browse the web, work on Office documents, and use Android apps. In fact, if you want to be portable, there are portable monitors you can buy instead of the desktop one. And lastly, Chromebooks. Yes, you could buy one in this price range. In fact, we went out and got HP's cheapest Chromebook for this video. Overall, for web browsing and working on Office documents, it definitely felt more performant and less frustrating to use. That's due to Chrome OS requiring less performance to run, and this Chromebook actually having a better processor than the three new laptops that we purchased. That being said, at this price point, it's still a really rough experience. The display sucks, viewing angles are bad, it's dim, and the resolution is very low, so everything just looks pixelated. Well, that's all we got. By the end of this review, these laptops became known around the office as the crap tops. Don't be fooled by the baits that these are. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash the like button, get subscribed. Not only does it help our channel grow, which means that we can create more content for you, but it also makes our dearest mothers very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.